Hi everyone. So today, as, be, as I've been in previous days and that I've streamed, we are continuing to play The Greatest Attorney Chronicles, more specifically The Greatest Attorney Adventures. We are on the second case, the adventure of the Unbreakable Speckled Band. And we are going right into it. So, what are your special orders this time, Inspector? Yes! Why are you dressed as a member of the crew? I'm so sorry. Huh? This is all my fault. I take full responsibility. For, for what? My orders were to act as a Sogi san's bodyguard. Huh? It was Minister of Justice Chigoku who pushed for this overseas study tour to go ahead. And he entrusted me with ensuring that a Sogi san reached Great Britain without being assassinated. Assassinated? How, how could that even be in the possibility? I'm not sure. But these are complicated times. There are tensions between the world's greatest powers. Minister Jigoku said he would be he should be prepared for all eventualities. This is incredible. I I, I don't believe it. Cosmo somehow was assassinated. Obviously we could give Asagi san a visible security escort. Which is why I'm undercover now, posing as one of the crew. I see. And I didn't take my eyes off him the entire time we've been on board, from morning until night, every day. But I never imagined it would happen here, inside his own cabin, not here on the first class deck. I fail miserably at my assignments, and Asuki san is dead as a result. I'm a disgrace. All I can do is humbly apologize. Spectre? So if there's anything at all that I can do to help now, just say the word. Permission to investigate. We're doing what we can to investigate Kazma's death ourselves. I thought you might be. You didn't do it, did you? You're not a killer. Of course not! I'd really like to investigate the cabin next door. Next door. Yes, so we need to be allowed out of this cabin. Uh, I'm sorry. What? You've redeemed the risk to the ship's safety. You moved to even touch the handle of the cabin door. The stormy looking seaman there will surely snap your neck in two. I suppose I'm not just a stowaway now. They think I'm a murderer as well. Would it be possible? To give me something to work with, do you think? I'm going to need something persuasive. What do you mean? I have a solid reason why the next door cabin should be investigated, for example. i do everything I could to persuade the captain to allow it. Really, I'd leave my life on the line if I had to. 
but I don't see how. There may be a way. What? R really? Think of how you tried to persuade me of your innocence, Naruto san. By presenting me with a piece of evidence that you already had in your possession. Evidence? Just same as when you are in court. You must have done it many times during your trial. So please select like the present panel. Choose some evidence you could use. That is Petra Sanaga could use. So evidence that will give us a reason to investigate the next door cabin, is it? Alright, yes. I I'm I think I might know what we can use. Let's see if I can present the detective with the evidence he needs to persuade the captain. Uh, okay. This one? I know I didn't go to present, but I want to check. Wait. Spectre, can I show you this? What the? Is that the fabled Imperial Yumba University bin badge? Um, I'm not sure if it's really fabled exactly, but... <coughs> so, you're a genuine student then? Sorry? Nothing like me, with my regular school. You're something much greater. Is that what you were trying to say? Um... Can I have my badge back, please? <laughs> I just had to do it. Uh, let me reset it. Uh, yeah. What's that? It's Kazma's diary. Just before he died, Kazma Sama wrote something rather strange in his diary. Strange? In what way? He wrote what looks like some kind of speckled band is dangling from the ventilator grill. A speckled band? That is strange. Yes, we are still trying to work out what he meant by that, but what I'd like to know is... Don't tell me. The ventilator, is it? Very astute, Inspector. That ventilator clearly joins next door cabin. That's right. So if you could investigate in there, you might be able to work out what the speckled band was. Alright then. Hmm? I can't leave this cabin at the moment. Stuck here until we arrive at the next port. The captain has given me strict orders to guard the scene of the crime, you see? To guard. I'll have to entrust the investigation to you. Really? You're willing to do that? Yes. As long as you don't leave the first cabin glass cabin area. I'm afraid I can't remove those handcuffs, though. But what about the captain? Aren't you going against his direct orders? <coughs> I'm a man of my word. I know I changed his voice from what I did before. I'm always changing his voice. I promise you that I'll lay my life on the line if that's what it takes to convince the captain. After all, I failed to keep Asogi san safe. This is the least I can do. Thank you. Let's use the moment then, Naruto-san. Just let move and we can leave this cabin at last. Move. Alright, let's see what we can find out. Move. First class passageway. Passageway that connects first class cabin on the SS Buria. First and foremost, we must get out of this cabin.
9th of January, 7.48 a.m. SS Buya, first class cabin, passageway. Phew, finally out of that cabin. I have to admit, this isn't quite what I was expecting. It's less spacious out here than I thought it would be. And this is the most luxurious accommodation. Yes, indeed. Kazma Sama was being sent on a study tour by the government. That's why he was being put in the first class cabin. Even still, this is about twice as large as my, as my accommodation in steerage. Really? That must be awful. Oh! Look over there! That's another crewman keeping watch. He looks enormous, even if he's sitting down. The door next to him leads to the second class accommodation. I suppose he's making sure that no one comes in here or should him. I suppose. Like people in handcuffs. Narodo-san, you look like a little boy visiting a toy shop for the first time. I would have thought you'd be used to the ship by now. You've been at sea for two weeks already. Well, yes, I know. But the thing is, I was inside Cosmos trunk when I first came aboard. Ever since then, I've been shut up inside that little wardrobe. It must have been a very trying time for you. Please, don't give me that pitying look. I want to accept it. This looks like a plan of the SS Buria. We chose each deck. Look! The Buria is a large-scale steamship with a triple-skin hull, but a marvel of engineering. Uh, it's been playing on my mind for a while now, actually, but... How it is that such a huge lump of metal doesn't just sink to the bottom of the ocean? Uh, that's really quite simple, Naruhodo, sir. It is? Well, uh, consider the Japanese archipelago. The islands of Japan? Yes, they're not metal, but they are enormous lumps of earth, many, many times larger than this ship. But they don't sink, do they? They've been floating happily on the sea since the gods created them. Well, I suppose so. Doesn't make much sense, but okay, okay. Huh, a trap for catching mice. Yes, we have plenty of those back home in Japan. I thought they seemed to be using a lump of chalk or something as bait. Let me see. Yes, I think that's what it's called. What is called cheese. It's made from the milk of cows. Cheese? I wonder what that tastes like. You can't eat it, Narodo-san. The trap will snap shut off your thing on your fingers. Really? But uh, I suppose you're right. We're not actually going to try it, <laughs> were are you? Huh? Where are you? All I had to eat for the past couple of weeks is Cosmos leftovers. I'll be right back. I'm not tr changing to the be right back. is running and I think I uh, hurt myself. All I've had to eat for the past couple of weeks was Kazma's leftovers. Don't know how hungry I've been in that wardrobe. Or you. I'll find a little snack for you later.
what do you think this is? It's a very pleasing shape, isn't it? That's the emergency alarm. Better, uh, probably best not to touch it. Oh, an alarm. It says, press only in times of emergency. It looks as though it sets alarm bells ringing all over the ship and bringing the vessel to a complete stop. Oh, this I have to see. What are you doing, Naruto san You must not, you mustn't touch it. This is an emergency situation. Just look at these handcuffs. You know who? Well, that's not what the alarm is for. If you were to bring this vessel to a standstill for no good reason, you'd be in an even worse situation. Uh, I wish everything would just stop. This ship included. If you have to do something foolish, at least make it something that doesn't affect anyone else. First class cabin number one. Uh, yes, that's our cabin. Not our, not our cabin. It's Cosmos Summers. Sorry. Your accommodation is confined to the wardrobe inside the cabin. You know how to make a stowaway feel small, don't you? The smallest wardrobe I've been calling home. These cabins are the finest on the ship. My own cabin in steerage is number 549, by the way. 500 and... But, uh, how many cabins are there? Um, excuse me, but could I ask you something? You, you little story mother! That wasn't a good start, was it? All right, let me try instead. Good day, Mr. Sailor. I'm so sorry to trouble you, but could I perhaps ask something of you? You, you little third class ladies maid. Oh. You seem to have got this sailor on a bad day, Suzato-san. I'm not Zilla. My mother gave me name. I am Senior Clueman. Beef Strogonov. The best thing is just to avoid eye contact, I think. First class cabin area. Um, uh, Mr. Strogonov, about this first class cabin area. Here we are in the finest parts of Burly Steam Ship. For very important persons. What sort of very important persons? Government officials, kings and queens traveling in secret. Many important persons. That is why I'm also always guarding this place. Gosh, that's amazing! But somehow I let stupid stowaway inside. I want to pick you up and throw in the ocean. But Strogonov is not anymore. He's food. Thank you. If I may, I was wondering... Is the cabin next to Mr. Sok is currently occupied? Da! Um, Suzato-san, did you understand that? It sounded like da. Da. I think it's probably Russian for yes, or no. Genius. It is not permitted to visit other cabins without invitation. Huh? Well, yeah, it sounds like there is somebody in next door cabin at least. Yes, it's tantalizing. Passenger in the next door cabin. Could you tell us who's traveling in the cabin next to Mr. Asogi? His name is Mr. Grisby Roylot. Grisby Roylot. 
Is that important, Western gentleman? Western gentleman? Do not think about it. He has nothing to do with my little stupid student boy. How can you be so sure about that? With the Roy Lord is authentic Western gentleman. Such a man will have no interest in lowly student for a significant Far East Islands. That was harsh. Could you tell us when Mr. Rylot came aboard? That is not your business. Can't think of it. Even though we've been at sea for two weeks now and I've been in Cosmos Cabin the entire time, I've never once heard anything from the next door cabin or even felt like there's anyone there. Well, presumably, since this gentleman is occupying one of the first class cabins... It must be rather important, is that right? That is not your business. Last night. And um, are you on watch here all the time, Seaman Stroganov? Da, all time. So criminals like you cannot come in or get out. I wonder, could you tell us anything about last night at all? It is said about student boy. Were you on watch last night as well? Of course. Did you notice anything at the time? Anything unusual? Here! Hey, yet! Um, so Zadison, did you understand that? It was clearly a no. It was clearly a no. I saw nothing unusual. Nothing at all. And you didn't hear any strange noises? Or sense anything was wrong in some way? I said no! Sorry! <laughs> Not so sure. I could have sworn that he wouldn't catch my eye for a moment there. This is enough. I cannot... I cannot say more now. Oh. <coughs> it is time for me to report to Cat. You must return to Cat. Yes, alright. Small Cat to second class area is staying locked at all times. You escape when lobster whistles on top of the mountain. Or as English say, when the pigs fly. Yes, I understand. Good, now I can investigate this area properly, shall we? Definitely. Definitely. book on top of the table were uh, there who really is huge. There's a pen with it too. Yes, I'm sure that's the ship's lock. Shall we have a little look through it? Uh, writing so neat and precise, every detail about the voyage has been meticulously recorded. Huh. You wouldn't expect a rough and ready sailor to have such beautiful handwriting. Anyway, look here. Last night's lock is mostly blank. I presume that means there was nothing to report. Let's wait to the second class Harry off the ship. Something wrong? I was thinking about making a run for it. <laughs> Just for a moment. Things aren't exactly going well for me. I might be wrong, but I imagine the moment you reach for the handle of the door, the pearly seaman will surely shoot you dead. Oh dear, I'm sorry. Perhaps I went a little too far there. No, I started here with my talk of running away. There's no way I could run away while Kazma's death remains a mystery anyway. Uh, 
messed up. Okay, so I only have to examine the door to this second cabin. Okay. This is it! This is the cabin next to ours. The one with the ventilator connects to. Yes, the ventilator from which Kazma Summer wrote that he saw a speckled band emerging. Maybe whoever's in this cabin can help solve that particular mystery. Let's ask. Knock knock. No answer. We're out of luck it seems. There's no one here there to help with our inquiries. How annoying. Ah! What was that? It came from inside the cabin. Such a... such a high pitch cream. It must have been a woman. Still aside. I'm about to break the door down. Is there homes? Is there homes? I shan't be stopped. When the fit is on me, I revel in kicking doors of their engines. Please, wait, Mr. Holmes. The door doesn't appear to be bolted. It doesn't? <laughs> then how the juice can I dispatch this muscular urge? What bray can I kick? Uh, I think we should go in. <laughs> There's no time to think about stress relief. Ninth of ninth of January. SS Buria, first class cabin number two. Ah. Oh. Oh. Who are you? Western gentlemen. This man looks Russian to me. We heard the woman scream. Woman? Don't be absurd. As you can see, there's nobody but me in this cabin. True, this old man does appear to be the only person in here. But in that case, we just screamed. Get out! All of you! Now! Please excuse the intrusion, but intrusion, but you are Mr. Grimsy Royalot, I believe. Yes, that's me. Oh, you are. I am the one and only, the actual Sherlock Holmes. You've heard of me, no doubt. No. I'm the great detective among great detectives. One who adorns the covers of popular magazines, no less. So I assure you, you may trust me completely. Man uses that magazine like a business card. A detective? I do not trust detectives. We distinctly heard the scream emanating from within this wall. We distinctly heard the scream emanating from within these walls. But there will not appear to be a lady concealing herself within the wardrobe this time. So might I be so bold as to ask you to open that small traveling case? What? Don't be stupid. How could anyone fit in a small trunk like that? In a small trunk like that? Oh, well, it's quite fashionable these days, is it not? Traveling inside one's trunk? Oh, look at me. Oh. Oh, my. Did, did you see that, Mr. Narodo? Yes. The case just shook. Leave. Now. Otherwise, I'll call the steward. 
So this is Cosmos neighbor, Mr. Grimsy Loyalox. There's no doubt about it. This strange Russian man is hiding something. I could agree more. Let's see if you can find some clues before that burly sailor returns. Seriously, Cheryl? Cheryl? Um, do you have a moment, please, Mr. Holmes? You need only address me as Holmes. As Holmes. That's what I just did, isn't it? Well, um, Mr. Holmes, uh... What were you doing in there? Why, well, I was resting, of course. Resting? Indeed. I was contemplating a sea voyage from the confines of the wardrobe whilst waiting. Waiting for the inevitable time that you will need a call by great powers of detection into the service. Oh! It would seem that the hour is upon us now. The time has come. I should have checked everything else. But mistaken? Well, um, no, actually, you're spot on uh, for once. Observe closely. Our shadow team is cabin, Mr. Roylock, is clearly trying to hide something. Uh, do you know what is the most effective weapon to use against a Russian hiding a secret? Why, the truth, of course. Though I should be pointed out that such methods are not exclusively, exc exclusively for r the Russians. Right. Can you imagine how the Russian will react when the secret guard so closely is exposed? Would you like to witness it? Oh yes, please! Well then, what are you about to see may well astound you. Well, I am about to apply my great detective's greatly admired great detection to the case. Could this man be a more acted portrayal of a dubious Russian, I ask you? From time to time it occurs to me. Is the fellow Tibius on account of his Russianness or Russian ex or oration on account of his dubiousness? <laughs> Holmes, don't. Don't do that. I, I really don't think either of those things should be occurring to you. Or anyone. That's right, Mr. Holmes. I know this man's beard and dark glasses are hard to ignore, especially on first meeting, but I once read, it is a capital mistake to theorize before you have all the evidence. That is his judgment. Shh. I must have complete silence. What? What you're doing? Why are you peeling at my face like that? Just as I thought. Yes, I have quite made up my mind now. Huh? There can be no other explanation that accommodates all the facts. Sir Oilot have reached two incontrovertible conclusions. But what do you mean? Number one, your true identity is that of a villain. Using those shears, you're about to end the existence of something most dear. I do not. Ah. And number two, you have the conclusion I have drawn. You are, at this very moment no less, in the midst of committing a most grievous crime. Beneath that beer, your mouth quivers with nervous tension as you realize that you have been discovered. Does it not? Ah. Oh, Naruto san, I never imagined I would witness one of Master Shon's great deductions with my own eyes. That was a great deduction? 
Now we can deceive Mr. Holmes. The single glance he can do something is to know about the person. What? What ineffable twaddle. Oh yes, I've read about it countless times in the adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And now I've experienced the astonishing impact of his great deduction first hand. It's like a dream come true. I can hardly believe it, but all the color has drained from Mr. Royal's face. Looks like somehow both of Mr. Holmes' conclusions were right. Only the details are. How? How could you? How could I possibly know such things, we wish to say? Very well then, I shall elucidate. I shall explain how it was that I arrived at this pair of conclusions. So do I cordially invite you upon a journey of logical discovery. Let us board the train of reasoning. Put, pen, put plainly, let us work through my deductions together. The great deduction, the game is afoot. Topic one, old man's identity. So, the dupe is looking Russian, Mr. Ryland. Obviously, what catches the eye in the first place? Is the enormous pair of shears in your hand? No. We ask ourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is staring us in the face. You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copy's beard you spot. Now moving on. The question that backed is this. Why would you desire to rid yourself of this magnificent beard, Mr. Royalot? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. Regard it, if you will, this morning's newspaper, particularly the fascinating front page article. Which it will appear you have read also, Mr. Royal. I'm sure it is no vertical clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolutionary. Translation the headline reads. Revolutionary villain Bolsheviks leads Russia via Shanghai. As you cannot fail to observe, the subject of the article it possesses an extremely copious beard. But it's a different beard. Uh, and a different nose. Having noted the article yourself, you decide to remove your incriminating facial hair before it gave you away. In short, your true identity is beyond doubt. You are the fierce Russian revolutionary himself, villain Bolshevik. Not that I've heard of you myself, you understand? A revolutionary on the run. Conclusion. Topic 2. Wrongdoing. Now, as for my second conclusion... You are, at this very moment, on the brink of committing a most grievous crime. And the proof of this crime? Over there! Oh yes, Mr. Royalot. Taken unawares, people have a propensity to let their eyes stray, you see? Ah. But I assure you, the eyes speak so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth. Yes, we seek lives where the furtive glance falls. The proof of a crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that's a traveling case. This time I think that the case be opened and its contents laid bare. No, I refuse. What could you possibly be concealing inside, we ask? By my estimation, a young lady perhaps. One slight enough to fit their in. To 
so don't be absurd. And what play will be the identity of this young lady in the traveling case? Dear me, we are not well suited for a life of crime, are we? The careless Kupdo... <laughs> Kupdoi... Betrays you. Hey. Once again, they need only a fellow your fifteen glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason you refuse to open your traveling case can equally be found in the page of this newspaper. For there is another most most stipulating article. If you turn from the fleeing revolutionary to the back page. The renowned prima ballerina of the Norwich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. Such a headline can lead us but one conclusion. Your crime is that of abduction. And according to the article, the young lady's name is Nikolina Pavlova. Conclusion. Kidnapping of a young ballerina. Thus concludes Sherlock Holmes' great deduction of this Russian enigma, Elementsky. Is that the sound? That wasn't one of the great deductions I've been hearing so much about, was it? Well, um, the stories are full of uh, Mr. Holmes' brilliant deductions, you know. But that did seem a little different somehow. Excuse me, Mr. Holmes, could you come over here a moment? And pray, what could I do for you? It's about your deductions, would you mind? Not at all, go on. Well, to start with, there's a newspaper article. I think we had the same discussion before, but... These two men look nothing like each other. Oh yes, I recall our discussion earlier. And at the time, I believe I told you... ...that the man is a revolutionary. Well able to revolutionize his own appearance. In fairness to Mr. Ash Mr. Holmes, Mr. Rana does look more like this man than you do. That's not the point. Another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina. Uh, and another thing, the part about him abducting the ballerina. Indeed, a truly startling revolution. Revelation. At first glance, the case would appear too small to accommodate a young woman. Not just at first glance, it is too small. Clearly. You'd be lucky to fit a five-year-old child in that case. Even if you pushed really hard. I don't suppose Miss Ballerina is five year old child, is she? You mean you don't know? No, the young lady's fifteen. No, I didn't know. How could I? <sighs> well, if she's fifteen, then ten years worth of her which will be poking out from the case. Some years ago I read something pertinent, I believe. A troop of men consuming vinegar daily in order to promote a certain liftness in their bodies. Vinegar? For such a sour bunch, it will surely be simplicity itself to contort oneself into the confines of that small case. Oh dear. You might be thinking of contortionists in the circus, Mr. Holmes. Ah, this whole thing is turning into a circus. Mr. Arrodo, something occurred to me about Mr. Holmes' deduction just now. I think his powers of observation are, well, magical. His eyes get to the art of the matter in, almost instantly. It's just where he directs his attention and his logic that seems a little off. The idea of a little may be a little lost your itself, Mr. Susato. Susato? Just one or two keywords in his deduction that seem to let him down. So I was wondering. We might perhaps tactfully switch them for alternatives. What do you think? Hmm. Switch some keywords in his deductions. Deductions? Yes, but very tactfully. I feel sure if you could do that, 
It unlocked the true genius of Mr. Holmes' great deduction. Precisely the thought that was going through my mind. This man has a lot of work. At times, I wonder how anyone puts up with me. <laughs> it's not that funny. Ah, and you, my good fellow. Sorry? Take a moment to look at your wrists. My wrists? Oh, where are your handcuffs? Huh? How? How did... I felt they may hinder your ability to follow me in your... In our dance of deduction. I don't believe it. Mr. Holmes, you are a marvel. And don't worry, I shall restore the shackles to your wrists when we are finished. I'm not worried. Take a rest still like this. So, let us begin. Sherlock Holmes is proud to present his logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. Topic one. Old man's identity. So, the dubious looking Russian, Mr. Royla. Obviously, what catches the eye in the first place? Is the enormous pair of shears in your hand. Now, you ask yourselves, what could you possibly want with such an implement? The answer, of course, is stabbing us in the face. You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the copious beard you spot. Right here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Would you really use shears like that to cut off a beard? I doubt there's something I'll ever have to worry about. It doesn't quite sit right with me, though. It doesn't seem to be sitting right with Mr. Royalty either. Which means, I suppose, that deduction is wrong. Let's try to switch a keyword here in that order, huh? And see if it helps matters. Alright, but now. I think we should stop by taking a long hard look at Mr. Ryland. I wonder if it's really his beard that he tend to use those shears on. Uh, was it Narodo? I wonder if it's really his, his beard that he tended to use those shears on. Exactly! If you do manage to find something that seems to fit the sense of Mr. Holmes' deduction banner, then what? Then I'll leave the rest in your capable hands, not all those, huh? Why am I the only... I'm the one to do something about this? Well, anyway, let's see if there's anything we could even use to switch around in the last sentence. But exactly what Mr. Royal we are really going to use those enormous shears at all. What the... What's this? It's like a cascade of stunning golden rocks. No, 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 the color is not the point. The point is, what's it doing on the back of Mr. Royal's head? And how is it growing out from underneath his thick black hair? Oh, yes, this is suddenly beautiful and stunningly surprising. Something's definitely not right here. Yes! You are on the verge of using the shears to cut away the golden locks you sport. Indeed, you have identified the precise detail I was intending to expose. Such lush golden hair suddenly lost befit an old man. You're not a man at all. You're a woman. Judging from the length of and chin of your hair, one oh, still very much in her youth. Oh no! If only I'd managed to get off my hair, no one would have suspected. The question that dagged is this Why would you decide to rid yourself of these magnificent, magnificent locks? Once again, the answer is plain. We have clear evidence to shed light on the matter. There is no further for clarification. The evidence that reveals your true identity is the article about the revolution. 
Well, that was a shock. I no idea that old man is really young woman in disguise. Did you? What? Why are you staring at me like that? Yes, it does a surprise, now, little son. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Sorry? You look like you are in an... Like you are in your element as you dance around the room to do the facts with Mr. Sholmes. I'm just doing what we agreed. I am not having fun or anything. It's strictly business. No strictly come. Yes, yes, I understand. Say no more. Well, anyway, let's focus on this next part of Mr. Sholmes' deduction, shall we? The evidence that he's picked out doesn't fit the facts at all now. Well, that's true, given that Mr. Roylott is actually a woman. Exactly. He, or, or rather she, can possibly be this merciless revolutionary. I suppose it's because the deduction as a whole has taken a different direction now. Yes. Let's switch the evidence for something else. Something that fits the facts as we now understand them. For some reason, this woman needed to try to hide her true identity. I feel as though I have either read or heard about a young woman in, this, in a situation like that recently. Alright, I'll do my best. Yes! Article about the balloon. The evidence that reveals your true identity is, of course, the article about the ballerina. That's right! You've hit the nail on the head! The known prima ballerina of the Novovich Ballet disappears from Shanghai. It will appear we are finally able to address you by your true name. Yes, because your true identity is that of the Novovich Ballet Prima Ballerina. Miss Nikoli the Pavlova! Uh... this crime <gasps> and the proof of this crime over there oh yes miss Pavlova take it otherwise people have a propensity to let their eyes stray you see <sighs> and I assure you the eye speaks so much more eloquently and honestly than the mouth the answer we seek lies where the furtive glance falls the proof of a crime sits before our very eyes. Yes, that traveling case. This woman is a ballerina, and she's right in front of our eyes. So clearly she can't be inside the traveling case as well. Uh... Oh, that's right. Seems she has wasn't abducted at all. In which case, what is the crime this young woman is apparently committing? I can see why I'm going to have to step in and fix a great detective's mistake again. Seem to look pleased, Naruto san. Do you like the idea of another chance to dance around with Mr. Holmes? Stop it. Anyway, there must be something else here that shows what this woman is up to. Uh. 
I'm going to say it's this, but I don't know. First, I'm going to check. Waste paper basket? Let's have a little look inside. No, no, hold the sun! It's poor etiquette to go sifting through someone's rubbish, you know. Ah, those eyes. She's looking at me like I'm a piece of rubbish now. Well, these are special circumstances, I think. Exactly, we have no choice. There's hardly anything in here at all. Oh, well, that's a little disappointing. Yeah, I see what it is now. It's to this side of it. Yes! The proof of your crime? You shall leave this tiara! <gasps> I believe this tiara is worn on stage by the in the Novovich Ballet, is it not? Indeed, it will appear to be identical to the tiara pictured here in this newspaper article. And if the reporting is to be believed, it's an item worth 20,000 rubles. Summary! Rubles, rubles. The crime you have committed is theft. Is theft. 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 Oh no! Yes, and if you're... You left your ballet group. A lovely taking that precious here with you. Ah. And no one, no family, no friends. I'm all alone. I need money. Still the tiara. There's a present from how do you say an earl? Prussia? Belongs to me. This girl is only 15 years old. She's run away all by herself. She must have been extremely lonely. Extremely lonely. Right, I will tell you everything. There is no point to hiding it now. Come on, let us not be hasty. What? There yeah, remains one unsolved mystery about you. Mystery? Well, what do you mean? What do you mean? I staunchly refuse to open this traveling case of yours in our presence. The reason will conclude therefore that there exists some reason why you wish it to remain close. Is that not so, Miss Pavlova? Um. My dear girl, there is no sense of playing games with me. Nothing escapes my attention. Indeed, I have a very good idea of the contents of your case, even before I have ever laid eyes on them. Dear me, we are not well suited to a life of crime, are we? Your careless Coupe Doyle betrays you. Once again, we need only follow your furtive glance to find the answer. Yes, the reason why you refuse to open your case is written in the books on the shelf. It's completely changed tag with his deduction now. I think Mr. Holmes is asking his logic to the changing circumstances, don't you? Maybe, but why was he suddenly brought the bookshelf into all this? Just a wild guess, surely. Oh, do you think so? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the reason why this young woman doesn't want to open her case would have been written in a book that doesn't even belong to her. Yes, that's true. But still, if I've never certainly cast her eyes in that direction, I noticed myself. Then there has to be another reason why she won't open her case. It must be somewhere in the same area. That's where her gaze is involuntarily drawn. I agree, that's the only answer. Whatever she has in inside that case should be revealed by following her gaze in the direction of the bookcase. 
the rules of passage, isn't it? <coughs> yes! Yes, the reason I refuse to open your case is written in the rules of passage. Peasants should not keep weapons or other dangerous objects in their cabins. Pets are also strictly forbidden. Inside that case of yours is something forbidden from carriage on this vessel. <sighs> that is the real reason why you refuse to open it, thus revealing its contents. I... As we've seen, the trunk wobbles from time to time. No weapon or other dangerous item would move on its own accord. Which leaves but one possibility, Miss Pavlova. Inside your trilogy case! This last item listed as forbidden the vessel's rules of passage. A pet! That was Deja Falano? No, it just shot us. Just notice I forgot to close the door today. Possessing of a prohibited end. Action complete. Elementary. So clearly, you aren't who you said you were. No, I'm not Crimsby Roylott. I will tell me they call in the Pavlova. Everything I said was correct. That's kind of doing one of your black company's performance in order to escape your own land. Later that same night, you stole aboard this vessel. Which couldn't have been easy. The booty is in a huge steamship with a vast crew. Unless the crew was on it. Did you really have snuck on board without being noticed? In order to absolve your true identity, you summoned Blacklist, took the guise of an old gentleman. And you intended to sever... to sever... all links with your past by severing your long hair. We add to a woman, hell is no trifling matter. Personal recommendation is to live well alone. So if it was just you about to cut off your own hair... What is that let out scream we heard from outside the cabin? That terrible tickle of tinkling of a bell? Why don't all other than this young lady naturally? Or like a full set of pipes if you ask me. Sorry, I'm going to close the door. I'm so scared when I ran away. I'm so scared when I ran away in Shanghai. When I ran away in Shanghai, I was sure they would come looking for me. And I just said to follows. <sighs> so I decided to, I'll just say, um, degust myself so no one would recognize me. Uh, as a result, you transform yourself into that questionable old man. I see. I put on the fur. I put on the fur hat and fake beard. Uh, then just before you came in here, I saw in the newspaper. Right on the page, there was a picture of me. I was so frightened. I couldn't stop from screaming. I knew that if I didn't have changed my appearance so quickly, they would find me. So I decided to cut all my hair as fast as possible. I picked up the scissors in my hand and... I 
that precise moment, we're walking through the noisily unlocked cabin door. Things happen like that sometimes, don't they? Things do indeed happen like that from time to time. Are those two even talking about the same thing? There's just one more thing I'd like to know. What exactly do you have inside your traveling case? You were right. It was my dear friend inside. My only friend in the whole world. Please, don't tell anyone. If the captain finds out, if you say to any of the crew, your secret is safe with us, I assure you. Uh, but in return, you must tell us, in as much detail as you can muster, about the events of last night. Yes, all right, I will tell you. Well, Mr. Naruto, was it something with Sir Holmes' great detection? It was certainly something, yes. I just not entirely sure what... Uh, to the least, Miss Pavlova has agreed to tell us what she knows. That's incredible. Indeed, it is incredible. Ah, uh, and one more thing. Oh, yes, what? Observe your wrists. My... I kept again. What? The... How? Due to my word, I have restored your shackles. Ugh. When? And why? There is still a shadow of guilt cast over you, Mr. Narahodo. I'm sorry to say, but it can't be helped at the moment. Uh, can't it? Really? Anyway, let's listen to what Miss Pavlova has to say. Can't go on not knowing. I have to find out what the speckled pen that Cosmo Summer wrote about in his diary really was. Okay, I think I'm going to stop right here. Say. So, let's turn the music uh, on the music. Well, until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you.